Hey everyone, welcome back to AFTV, welcome back to the Tactical Insight Show. Um, Arsenal lost to Liverpool 2-0 last night. Um, things to like in the performance, absolutely. There's some positives we're going to go into. Um, and some, I think some moments where you can see what Arsenal still have to, still have to learn, still have to improve, where Liverpool drew on their experience and um, just their, their know-how. They've been there and done it and it got them over the line. Um Graham's not here with me today, it's just me. Uh, he will be back though uh, to break down the Villa um, result. Hopefully a win. It's going to be a much needed win because we need to bounce back. But look, there were, I, I, it's quite a sombre start, but actually there were things to like about the performance. We're going to go into it all um, because Arsenal, they showed some clever things tactically that I think got us through a first half. And actually, to be fair, got us through most of the game. But there was that 10 minute spell where Liverpool just turned it up a gear. And... Um, Arsenal didn't really have an answer for it, not on those 10 minutes. Um, let's go through it, starting with the match stats, um, because it kind of tells the picture, it kind of tells the story that Arsenal, it was a very even game. Both teams kind of nullified each other quite well. Nine shots each, an extra shot on target for Liverpool. Um, they had a little bit more of the ball. Arsenal had moments of sustained possession. Um 502 Arsenal passes there, 518, and they had a better XG, um, hit the target a few more times, obviously, with the goals. Uh, but that was the one thing about Arsenal. How often were we really testing Alisson? You could think of the Erdegaard chance, but not too many times. Um, Arsenal, I felt, played a good first half, a, a first half where, where they were competitive. Um, they did a few things tactically. I expected Arteta to change things a little bit to deal with their frantic front three and they did and actually they dealt with them quite well in fact I thought uh, Liverpool's front three were probably the three worst performers of the night even though Jota got his goal and then Firmino came on made a difference but I thought their midfield three and their defence um, were the foundations for, for Liverpool's for Liverpool's victory um, there were things that Arsenal did in the first half that were good and we're going to touch on it here on the tactical pad regarding Arsenal's shape so let's go into it here now this is Alisson on the ball. I felt that Arsenal would be wrong to put Cedric in one-on-one -on -one situations with Diaz. Um, it's one thing when it's Tommy Asu, who's proven very athletic and very good um, at kind of dealing with tricky wingers. We saw how he did against Raheem Sterling in the City game on New Year's Day. Cedric is much better. Not, I'm not saying that Tommy Asu, but I mean, his strengths are on the ball. Uh, he looks after it in tight spaces. He gets forward. He could put a ball into the box. And I think the idea was to get Cedric, who's quite a frantic player himself, the way he plays, to get forward and press onto Robertson more. Let me just show something here. So Alisson's got the ball. It goes wide to Van Dijk. And what we basically had was Saka and Lacazette pressing quite narrow, actually. And Saka more so blocking the passing lanes into Thiago, trying to put Van Dijk under the pressure, making sure there wasn't an easy ball into midfield or, or, or going long for him. So often Van Dijk would come wide to Robertson. At that point, as you can see here, Cedric would get forward and everyone would shift across. What I basically found quite interesting in that first half was you had yourself in this situation where, let's show it in white, where, so speaking of white, Ben White was defending much more one-on-one -on -one with their left-sided forward. Gabriel was coming across to deal with Jota. Tierney was dealing with Mane. I think the biggest compliment you can play to how Arsenal defended those front three is two things. One, we saw in the first half, Jurgen Klopp, switch Diaz and Mane um, to ask different questions. At times we even saw Mane up top, Jota left. They were move he was moving them around. He was moving them around because they were being defended very well one-on-one. -on -one. The, the, the passes over the top were being covered and marshaled well. Um, and then when they were getting into one-on-one -on -one areas, they were winning their interceptions, Gabriel and White. And I think the other compliment is that just before they scored their goal, he was bringing on Firmino and Salah. Two changes to that front three to ask different questions. They did score just before the change, but he persisted with it. He didn't think, OK, well, they've had their moment, so we'll leave him. He carried on. Gary Neville mentioned that in commentary. You know, he stuck with his guns and made the change anyway. I think he knew that Arsenal were dealing with that situation pretty well. And I think it tells you a lot about how they set up in this sort of system where Cedric was getting forward a lot more to press when Robson had the ball. But actually Martinelli was coming across as a lot deeper and Xhaka would get close to Partey. And the two of them were pretty robust 
if we just show it here, let's show it in green, were pretty robust in those central areas. And we knew that the front four were always going to work hard. You know, Lacazette, Odegaard, uh, Saka. And when they won the ball, they would play out the back quite nicely. They'd try and pick off the space. They'd try and beat the Liverpool press. And they did that nicely, to be fair to them. But the one thing I'd say is that as well as that worked in the first half, um, and then Arsenal played some nice football and gone to some decent areas, got Martin A pinned one-on-one -on -one with Trent. Um, Liverpool, I think, recognised this. And as I said, recognising it with the changing of wings, uh, recognising it with the substitutions Klopp went and made, they started to attack that space a little bit better and ask different questions. Let's have a little look at their goal. So as I said, for all its working in the first half, in the second half, you see a very similar thing. So Thiago's got the ball. Let's highlight them here, actually. Again, we'll do it in white. Cedric is out here and he's already anticipating the ball out to Robertson. He's going to get out there. Let's get rid of that, actually, and show it again. He's already anticipating getting out to Robertson if that ball's going to come wide. And as we can see again, we'll show it. Saka's playing quite central. He's pressing quite central with Odegaard and Lacazette. But the thing about this is it left Mane, who got closer to Ben White there, and it left Diaz coming across to Gabriel. So White is almost waiting. I think he's got an eye on this shot to run. He's been watching him all game attacking that space or, or whoever the left-sided forward is but at this point as I've mentioned here Mane is close to him so he's asking him a different problem and I think where it's tricky here for White is he's watching Mane but he's also got Jota who's basically going to run off him and attack that space and that's what I mean by asking different questions I think they almost started to double up on White and double up on some of our centre-backs to start to pull them out of position a bit more, ask them a few more questions. Thiago plays a lovely ball into Jota. And at this point, Mane's run off him. White's watching Mane go the other way. He's also watching Jota attack the space. Cedric's too far wide, although that is what they've been doing all game. And Jota's running a goal, gets a shot off with his left foot and Ramsdale should do better. But I want to pull it back a second here to Jota running into this space. Now, when this was happening live, I kept thinking, mark the area, mark the area. Just make sure they can't get an easy, get an easy cross into the box. They can't, they're not going to find a tap in. And in fairness, unlike with the second goal, Arsenal did that quite well. Let's bring it back to that fourth frame here. Uh, yeah, let's bring it to here and show a little edit. Gabriel, in fairness, has marked that area well with Mane and Tierney has with Diaz. So actually they're dealing with the two men in the box. And I think that is why Jota naturally thought, well, there's probably not a comeback, I'm gonna, a cutback. I'm going to take this on with my left foot and Ramsdale should do better. I almost, I, I describe Liverpool often as playing percentage football. Someone mentioned it once and I thought that's so true. They often just go with kind of what's the, what we've got the most chance of success with. That's why they'll play a lot of long balls over the top. That's why they'll have regularly a lot of shots in games. That's why Arsenal did so well to limit them to not so many shots. But generally, they will hit them from a lot of different angles, a lot of different distances or whatever. They'll get the, pump the ball into the box a lot because they'll get the ball into dangerous areas. Diogo Jota in this situation has thought, well, the cross is in there. I'm just going to hit it and hope. And that's where Ramsdale should do better. And I think nine times out of ten, he saves that. And that's where it's a little bit unfortunate for Arsenal and disappointing. I thought Ramsdale had a good game in terms of getting the ball, a good distribution, finding pockets in midfield when Partey was dropping in. Uh, often the outlet to Martinelli was on whilst White was finding Saka. So there were some nice combinations. But first and foremost, you're a goalkeeper and he needs to do better with that effort. He's had a fantastic season, um, but that was a disappointing moment, I thought, for Aaron Ramsdale. Um, and when I talk about sort of being effective, you know, in the box and, and percentage football, I think that's exactly what Mikel Arteta describes in this quote here that I just want to show you from after the game. Listen to what he says. So we've got it here. The way the boys performed show their courage to play the way we wanted. They really raised their level, but unfortunately games are won in the boxes and that was the critical difference today. Martinelli, the amount of times he got to the byline and the cutback, you know, he pulls it off, but you, they've not got in front of their man. Or the cutbacks, not the, the, the cutbacks pulled off, but they've not found that space in the box. Now that could be good Liverpool defending. But there was one where Martinelli just 
lovely ball across and no one got there. And you're thinking, look at the Firmino goal. Look at the goal that then they score with Firmino, where, you know, he has attacked that space and he's tapped it in and it's 2 0. And that was the difference. Um, it's what they did in the boxes. Now, for that second goal, um, you know, it, it was poor from Saka. I didn't think he had a great game. And I think um, it wasn't great from Gabriel not tracking Firmino. But what I will say is they were effective in both their boxes. And I, what I mean by, when I, when I say effective, I don't just mean having shots, creating chances. I thought Arsenal did well to limit them to so many, but they get the ball into the box. They get touches in the area and they at least cause a degree of, Panic in the Arsenal defence. I felt they, I felt Arsenal stood up to it mostly, but they do cause those problems. Let me show you some stats. So I think show you what I mean. So Liverpool, the amount of full, the amount of crosses their fullbacks put into the box, sixteen. Trent with nine of them. Arsenal fullbacks only seven. Tierney got two of them. Tierney, we know, is a good crosser of the ball. Um, only put two in all game. And we said, and that makes sense. Cedric got five of them. And we said, you know, as we showed the shape, Cedric was getting forward more than Tierney. Um, but still, not really enough. Not asking really enough questions. And certainly we were getting the ball into the box. Not having Saka and Martinelli frequently getting into those areas either. Uh, Liverpool interceptions, 10 to Arsenal 6, winning the ball back more often. And then head-to-head -head in terms of attacking aerials one, they won 10 attacking aerial duels to Arsenal's two. If you're intercepting, you're winning the ball back, you're putting cross into the box, you're already naturally causing more kind of defensive stress on the opposition. And that is what Arsenal had to deal with. Um, I think for a lot of the game, dealt with it quite well. Liverpool weren't at their best, but they'll still apply that amount of physical pressure. We're having to win a lot of headers. We're having to, you lose a header, so you're having to track back. I felt Arsenal in the second half started losing a lot of their second balls. And that's where the second half dropped compared to the first half. Um, and that is, you know, again, having an impact in the boxes. And I think that's what Arteta is alluding to. Let's um, talk about some positives. I think there were some positives. Arsenal playing through the lines brilliantly. Let's have a look at, little look at Thomas Partey's numbers. He was a big part of why we played through the lines so well. Uh, 10 attacking third passes for Partey, the third highest in the Arsenal team. Four ball recoveries. He ranked first for that. 10 take-ons as well. Taking on is, you know, when, when the... Um, when under pressure, if the pass wasn't on, he was happy to beat a man and, and drive into midfield. Um, he ranked first for take-ons. Three tackles, ranking third, and two interceptions, ranking second. I thought Thomas Partey was absolutely class today and didn't look at all. He didn't look a fraction off anyone off that uh, on that pitch, including the Liverpool players. I think there's a good argument. I think Matip won man of the match from Liverpool perspective. I thought Martinelli and Partey never deserved to be on the losing um on the losing team. Um, I thought Partey was really, really good today. There was a moment, I mentioned it in heart, the half-time show, there was a moment in that game where Thomas Partey also had to weather a few early minutes of pressure, corners, crosses, all that. They did. Um, and then Partey had a moment where he wins the ball, he's on the edge of our area, he's getting swamped and he just turns out and he plays a pass forward. And that was the trigger for Arsenal going, OK, we settled. We remember what we're here to do. And I thought Partey set the tone for some of our best football and best moments. Some of the passes into Saka, some of the other bits and bobs he did. I thought he was fantastic. And I thought generally Arsenal on the ball and where, where Arteta talks about what we did outside the boxes, literally going from one end to the other, I thought we were very good. I thought we progressed through Liverpool very, very well. We got Martinelli isolated with Trent Alexander-Arnold Trent Alexander on quite a few occasions. Um, and I think that was the game plan. I thought they executed it quite well. If just a little bit of quality with those catbacks or Odegaard, you know, when Lacazette does have that moment, he pulls it back and everyone's got back to their line. You know, you think oh, those are the moments. Um, um, but I thought Arsenal really gave a good account of themselves. I also want to give credit to Gabriel Martinelli. Um, you know, I've got him down as my Arsenal man of the match. I did say Partey on full time, but in fairness, I will give it to Martinelli because he was so dangerous. And if we ever looked like scoring, it was it was going to come through him. Some of the skill, beating beating Trent for pace, beating him and Anderson for pure skill, uh, finding cutbacks into the box. Um, a few even moments where he was offside, but he'd got him behind. He was causing problems. I thought Martinelli was terrific today. And there's a reason why Jurgen Klopp keeps praising him because he's an absolutely terrific player. And I thought that was his best performance for a while, actually. Looked good against Leicester, scored a great goal against Watford. 
thought he was really, really good. He seems to like playing Liverpool, doesn't he? He seems to relish these occasions. The way he looked after the ball at times, all that. Martinelli, my man of the match. Absolutely terrific. So, look, a weird one, guys, because there's things, there were positives to talk about there. There were things I enjoyed about Arsenal's performance. But ultimately, we've lost. That's six times we've played City and Liverpool and we haven't won a single one of those games. In fact, we haven't scored against Liverpool all season. That is a problem. But can you see the makings of a really good foundations for a side going forward? Can you see where a quality forward and a quality midfielder elevate this this squad significantly and, and, and this team and and all the good, the niceness, you know, can start having a bit of substance to it when those players come in? Yeah, I can see that. I can absolutely see that. Let me know if you guys can. Um... Things to things to be proud of, things to positive to take, but we lost. Um, so back to the not back to the, no no. I was about to say back to the drawing board, not back to the drawing board. Just back in the changing room, getting that ice bath, wash it off, go again Saturday. It's going to come round very quickly Saturday, and I was saying in full time. I think it's a good it's a good opportunity for a bounce back. Villa are a very good side. Don't get me wrong; they'll cause us problems. They've got some very talented players. But they're not necessarily playing for anything this season um, other than pride and points and, and climbing the table. Um, so they're not in a relegation scrap. They won't have massive hopes for Europe. Um, it's an opportunity for Arsenal to play a good side that might take the game to us. And I think that might suit us a little bit, um, especially if we've got that extra hunger, that bit of desire that will get us over the line. So bounce back, Arsenal. They bounced back really well all season. Um, do it again. Some things to like. Um, but ultimately, Liverpool just too good and even not at their best, partly because Arsenal nullified them. They still were able to show that quality when it mattered. Um, so, yeah, pick your heads up, Arsenal, especially you and Ramsdale. I know he'll be hating that error he made, but we go again. Well done, Arsenal. Like this video um, if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And um, check out all the content that's going to be coming out ahead of Villa because that's coming thick and fast on the channel because... The games are coming thick and fast. <laughs> we haven't said that for a while. Come on, Arsenal. Bounce back. Let's go again.